Saguaro National Park on NP3. Hi there, welcome to NP3, the National Parks Photography Program, and today we're going to be talking about Saguaro National Park. So, the first thing we know about Saguaro National Park is that it's divided into two units. There's an eastern unit, also known as the Rincon Mountain District, and then there's a western unit, and these are um, around Tucson, Arizona. So the, the Rincon Mountain distant, District is east of Tucson, and the western unit then is, is west of Tucson near the Arizona Desert Museum and some other attractions. Um, so the first question you might ask is, if you have a limited time, you know, what's the difference between the two units and which one should you go to? The, the, the western unit is the one that's uh, a little more accessible, like if you're coming down from Phoenix, um, the interstate highways, the major highways around Tucson uh, go west and then south of the city with the uh, mountains running along the, the eastern and northern sides of Tucson. So uh, if you're just like sort of swinging down from a day from, from Phoenix or Casa Grande or anything like that, then, then you're probably going to have an easier time uh, getting to uh, the western unit. And like I said, also there's other attractions including the Arizona Desert Museum, which is kind of a good complement to a visit to Saguaro National Park right around there. Um, by contrast, the, the eastern unit or the Rincon Mountain unit is uh, it's about twice as large and um, it's probably easier to, to drive through. There's a, uh, a paved drive, that, that loop road, that, that goes through the, the eastern unit. And so, uh, you know, if, if your way of seeing the parks is to, you know, tour through it in your car and you just want to, you know, stop at viewpoints and, and look out, that might work a little better. There's also a, a, a loop road in the, the western unit, but it's gravel instead of paved, and uh, I don't think it's quite as nice. I don't think you see quite as much uh, just from, from the loop road uh, there. Um, in terms of the actual scenery, there is some difference between them. The, uh, the, the number of cacti in the eastern unit is, is lower than the western unit. The western unit is more kind of that dense cactus forest that I think is sort of what you anticipate when you're going to Saguaro National Park. So if you want to see that sort of more dense concentration of, of saguaros, then that's a strike in favor of the western unit, whereas the eastern unit, especially for hikers, uh, has, has more trails, more miles of trails, and it has um, you know, some trails that go up a ridge into the Rincon Mountains, and so those uh, provide, you know, a change of ecosystems from the saguaro forest into kind of a, a grassland desert area and then actually up into some pine forests. Um, the eastern unit also has some backcountry campsites, so if you're wanting to hike in and do some camping in the national park, um, that's going to be the place for you. And again, just because of its larger size and it, it backs into uh, Coronado National Forest, so um, there's a lot there for you know, sort of the more backcountry hiking and uh, uh, camping experience. The western unit has fewer miles of trails, but it does have some really excellent trails. My favorite hike that I've done in Saguaro National Park uh, goes up to Wasson Peak, and you can get there straight from the visitor center as an out and back uh, uh, along the ridge of the Hugh Norris Trail, or you can start closer to the, uh, just kind of across the street from the Desert Museum and follow up the uh, King Canyon Trail, and then that will connect up to the Hugh Norris Trail and Wasson Peak, which is the highest peak in uh, that that eastern or excuse me, in that western area of Saguaro National Park. So it's a great place, panoramic views, and you kind of stay uh, more in that Saguaro uh, ecosystem. The, the number of cacti as you get in the mountains thins out a little bit, but you kind of still feel like you're in that sort of classic, iconic uh, desert uh, ecosystem the whole time. My favorite hike in the eastern unit is the Tanca Verde Ridge Trail. And so that you take right from the, uh, the loop road um, and then you just follow this ridge and like you can go, you know, tens of miles back into uh, the, the National Forest. And so uh, you know, that's a great way to, uh, you, with those out and back trails, the nice thing is you can sort of control how long a hike you want to do because once you get tired, you just turn around and being uphill first 
um, it's easier coming back than, than heading out. So you can always do that. And, um, but it was really an interesting experience. It was a beautiful trail, beautiful views, and great to see that sort of change of uh, ecosystem as you, you move along on the trail. So those are sort of my favorite trails in the, the western unit up to Wasson Peak and in the eastern unit on Tanca Verde. In terms of photography, um, the first thing to think about always with photography is sunrise and sunset um, being the best times and especially in Arizona you get these beautiful desert sunsets and, and sunrises and that's of course what you want to photograph. Um, both parks have, uh, uh, especially if you're on the, staying on the loop roads and just trying to drive in, which is what I've done um, for sunrise or sunset, both parks will have mountains that are uh, uh, different ranges of mountains that are uh, on the east side of the loop roads. And so um, it makes it difficult to get that sort of very early, if you want to get the sun right on the horizon and take that shot, you know, just as the sun comes up, that's pretty difficult because the mountains are blocking it. And so by the time the sun gets high enough to clear the mountains, you've lost some of the color in the sky and things like that. By contrast, um, they both have open views looking west. So if you want to shoot sunset with that sun right on the horizon, um, you'll, have, you'll have views back, back west. Um, the thing to keep in mind, I would prefer, for both sunrise and sunset, I'd prefer the western unit. Um, the eastern unit, uh, they, they gate more carefully, and so you can shoot sunset there. Uh, a ranger starting at sunset will work his way around uh, the loop road, and so if you're still out there, he will ask you very nicely to uh, start making your way out and then follow you to make sure that they don't lock anyone in the park or anything like that. So you don't have quite the freedom and the time that you might like at sunset to uh, get photos. You can do it, but um, like I said, they're going to clear clear people out. If you're not overnight, if you you know if you have a permit and you're backcountry camping, obviously then everything changes. But if you're just visiting for the day, um, that's something to keep in mind. Whereas it is also before I move on to the western unit. Uh, the other consideration at sunset in the eastern unit is you are kind of looking back over Tucson, and so um, that's not bad. But there's some you know, some city lights and and things associated with cities uh, that might impact um, still beautiful views. But uh, you are going to have um, some development that you know if you're shooting down into the towards the city there. Um, from the western unit, uh, you're overlooking some, you know, like farmland kind of areas, and so there's some roads and, you know, a few lights here and there, but uh, you get really good views uh, at sunset looking back uh, towards the west. Um, but you can, like I said, uh, sunrise, if you don't need that sun right in the shot, I've shot some beautiful images of beautiful sunsets uh, in the western unit kind of looking more north and with the sky, the clouds all lit up, uh, pinks and oranges. And um, so you can do some really, really great work um, there at sunrise. So I don't want to discourage you from, from shooting sunrises at, at Suaro. And then my final photo tip is sort of a composition, uh, a suggestion, I guess, about compositions. And normally, one of the things I've, I've talked about in my, my previous videos and I've uh, I sort of obsess over when I'm shooting landscapes is foregrounds. I like to you know get down and and find you know some sort of interesting pattern or uh, a foreground that helps lead the eye into the uh, into the image. And so often you know if it's a if it's a, a stream or you know I'm looking for rocks along the side of the stream or a, a lakeshore or a seashore and really kind of lowering my perspective to use those element, foreground elements to help, again, draw you into the picture. Um, now, finding ways to lead the eye into the picture is obviously still important at uh, a place like Saguaro National Park, but I tend to think of it a little bit differently. It can be a little more difficult if you're in a flatter area to find, you know, really sort of definable uh, foregrounds without, you know, bushes or, or growth that are obstructing your view of the rest of the scene. And so one of the things I found works well in, in a place like Saguaro is instead of lowering the perspective is to use the cacti to help 
help create steps that draw you into the picture. So instead of trying to find just a very even uh, a composition where all of the cacti are sort of equidistant or the, the, the closest ones are equidistant from the lens, you know, I like to try to get, uh, you know, one that's really quite close indeed to the front of the camera and then, you know, one or two sort of middle distance cacti and then, uh, uh, you know, some background cacti and then, you know, like maybe mountains way off into the background. So that way you're creating steps from side to side leading the eye uh, into the image and so you're still helping organize it and still helping uh, direct the viewer uh, through your image but you're doing it with things that are kind of going on a vertical plane instead of a horizontal plane. There are areas with the mountains and things like that where you'll find uh, foregrounds on, like, on the ground that you can use. Um, so you don't want to like throw that, looking for that away. But um, the sort of the nature of the saguaro does provide uh, another avenue to help create, uh, um, draw people into the image and, and create that, that sort of composition that you're looking for. And the other nice thing about doing that is the, the texture of the cactus, whether it's the saguaro or prickly pear or ocotillo or any of the kinds of cactus that you'll find there, I mean that spiny texture is really beautiful and really interesting. So uh, by trying to f have uh, uh, a cactus closer to the foreground and helping frame that image, um, you're also giving the viewer like additional information about what that, uh, that landscape is like and you know, what that experience is like and it helps sh more fully share that experience that you're having. So that's my overview of Saguaro National Park. Uh, two units, both very interesting and complementary, but a little bit different from one another. Uh, I like the eastern unit better for, uh, there's more miles of hiking trails and I think it kind of sets up better for, uh, with the paved loop road if your uh, interest is just in driving through the park and uh, exploring the sites from the roadside. Um, and the eastern unit also has the uh, backcountry camping opportunities and the chance to see different ecosystems. The western unit is uh, uh, more accessible in terms of reaching. Uh, if you're coming especially from the north, it's closer to the interstate and easier to get to. Uh, it also has the denser uh, saguaro forest and my favorite hike that I've done in the park. Um, but both of them are really great uh, places, so if you, have, if you have more than one day, definitely try to uh, check both units out. Um, if you uh, have any more questions about Saguaro National Park, visiting the park or uh, taking photos in the park, uh, or if you've been to Saguaro National Park and you have any extra thoughts that might be uh, useful, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. If you like this video and it's useful to you, uh, make sure to give it the uh, thumbs up, give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future about national parks and national parks photography topics, then uh, subscribe to this channel and you'll make sure that you don't miss any future content. Otherwise, get yourself to the Sonoran Desert and uh, explore Saguaro National Park for yourself when you get a chance. And until you can do that, um, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.